In the previous video, I defined the hyperbolic functions. They were a parallel version of the trigonometric functions based on the hyperbola instead of the circle. In this video, I want to cover the inverse hyperbolic functions. To do so, let me remind you how inverse trig functions are defined. To be invertible, a function needs to be monotonic. It needs to be always increasing or always decreasing. The trig functions are periodic, so they needed to be restricted to small domains to be invertible. There are conventional choices for these domains, which are listed in the reference materials. For sine, the domain is negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. The output of sine on that domain is negative 1 to 1. Then the inverse reverses the domain and range, a function with inputs from negative 1 to 1 and outputs from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. The inverse undoes the original function, so sine composed with arc sine or arc sine composed with sine always gives back the original value. And this same setup is true for hyperbolics, but they are happily easier to deal with since they are not periodic. Shine is increasing for all of the real numbers. It looks roughly like a cubic graph. Therefore, it is invertible on all of R. The inverse is written arc shine, again in parallel with trig. It has the same property as all inverse functions. To compose with the inverse is to undo the original function. In the same way, I can invert all six hyperbolics. Here is a table, which is also in the reference materials, of the domain and range for each hyperbolics. Some of these domains are restricted to make the functions invertible. The arc prefix is still used for all of these functions to indicate the inverse. And in this way, each hyperbolic has an inverse function. Hyperbolics, in addition to their geometric definition, turned out to be related to exponentials, as I talked about in the previous video. The inverse of an exponential is a logarithm, so it is pretty natural to ask what the relationship is between inverse hyperbolics and logarithms. I'm not going to go into the construction here, but there is a relationship. All of the inverse hyperbolics can be expressed as logarithms. Here are the inverses of shine, cosh, and hyperbolic tangent expressed as logarithms. Again, this points to hidden structure, which I'll return to again before the end of the course.